Hey y'all, this is Pete. Um, frustrated for a lot of reasons today. Um, this is about the fourth time I've tried to do this and technical issues, but also just frustrated with y'all seeing the news this weekend. Um, this is a really crazy time in our history. This is a profound time. Uh, this is a time that we're seeing things that we I have not seen in my lifetime a uh, sustained protest in major cities. That's something that you just have not seen in the U.S. for decades. Um, I've seen beautiful things. People out speaking to power is a beautiful thing to me. Um, we've seen terrible things. We've seen terrible things that precipitated these situations. Uh, we've seen terrible things in the midst of these in these protests. Um, but we've also seen points of beauty as well. I've seen, I've heard public speakers, both elected and people on the street, speak with such passion and feeling that it's been, I've, I've been very enlightened with that. Um, and overall, I am, we've seen property damage. Um, we've, overall, things have actually been, we've, there's insurance to pay for a lot of property. I get that this is a, it's not where we want to be, but it's, that doesn't concern me that much right now. Um, what concerns me is why we're here. Um, and let's be clear, we're in this situation right now because of inaction by our elected leaders who could have acted at some point in the last five years, 10 years, 50 years, 150 years. Um, we've entered another cycle with between Mr. Floyd and Mr. Arbery and Ms. Taylor, where this has been a cycle that's been through our immediate history for a while, where we have, it took, in each of their situations, it took video evidence for us all to see and judge for ourselves to make action happen. It took extraordinary action of people on the streets to get an officer that clearly murdered a man on the ground to be held accountable in at least a little bit away. Um, Mr. Arbery's case, they that seemed to be fast tracked to go straight through and be marked off as justifiable. And I was actually heartened at the fact that when the videos of these things came out, um, we didn't immediately go to our own little political corners. Um, our, there was people from all sides that looked at these videos, even in law enforcement. I got friends in law enforcement, I got family, I got neighbors that they looked at that and thought, that is not how I was taught. This is not how it's supposed to be done. Um, I don't hear people defending the actions of the Louisville police that went into a <clears throat> unannounced into the wrong home killed a woman and then arrested the man that shot back at them after they invaded his home without any uh, any justification since it was the wrong home and without announcing themselves. Fortunately, that the boyfriend has been released from jail. That doesn't bring Rihanna back. And that's bad. Um, yeah, and this and don't get me wrong, this is not something against police. I've got friends. I'm, I'm one of my running mates here in Jackson County. He's a great guy. He's a Jefferson police detective and I trust him and I know he's in it for the right reasons. The people I know in law enforcement personally are in it for the right reasons. I understand it's a very hard job. We don't make it easy for them and then we have cut taxes and cut our revenue in, in the state and local area that we don't pay them near enough for what they have to deal with. For the challenges that we give them because we all we've cut these taxes we've cut their pay we've we don't support mental health in this area like we should at all so they're so basically we have schools and our police dealing with the mental health issues of society that we don't deal with anywhere else with actual mental health professionals we put so many challenges on these positions and then and then things happen um, and I get the challenges in this but at the same time 
we've got to demand more. We've got to demand better. Um, <clears throat> when you empower someone with a badge, the ability to take away freedoms on their own recognizance because they see something and they make that choice, even if it's temporarily taking away that freedom, um, we have to demand an excellence that we demand in a lot of other areas that mistakes just can't be made. Um, and that's that's where I'm coming from. Um, we've, and, and yes, there is a racial aspect to this. Obviously, there's a racial aspect to it. If you are familiar with the history of the United States, you know there's a racial aspect to it. Um, it's not just, there are miscarriages of justice all over, regardless of race, but there is a definite, definite, you can tell, you can see in the data, you can see in interactions that black people have with law enforcement regularly that I as a white guy have never had. Um, I've told this story several times. Like I, 43 year old white dude, I, if I'm pulled over by the police, it's never once in my past going through my head to be worried for my life. I might be worried about how much my ticket's gonna be, um, annoyed that I've been delayed in where I'm going, I'm never worried about being detained. Um, like I'm in, Usually my attitude, I'm not, I'm not a rude guy. I'm not yelling and screaming at somebody that pulls me over. I hadn't been pulled over for a while. Um, but when it, ha when it happens, I, I, just, I never yell and scream, but I'm definitely not, hey, how you doing? And just happy and smiling because it's a, it's a pain in the butt to deal with. But it's never once gone through my head to be worried. Um, I can, and I can relay like just stupid situations we did in college. Uh, where the, we had interactions with police as college kids, a bunch of white college kids, um, and there were once where we scared that physically something would happen. And it wasn't until real conversations with real friends who are black that I understood that, that you hear that is not the life they lead. That is not the experience that they have. Um, and that's only through these real conversations with real friends that you learn these things. Um, we're hearing this more and more. We learn, I think we as a society are learning it. But I don't think that's permeated out to everyone that there is a definite difference in how different racial groups in this state are, in this nation, are dealt with. Um, and that, and if you read our history, you know that this is, this is something that's permeated through. Um, and we've got to get past this. And that's... That is why we are in this situation. That is why we have people in the streets right now, and that's what we have to do to, to get them out of the streets and let them feel that they have some justice in their life. Um, because, you know, you can say that it's bad apples. It's, we've got to do a better job of sorting our apples in that case. Um, but, yeah, and that's where I'm going to turn this to myself. That's why I'm running here in House 31. Because when we're talking about needing leaders who understand that there is systemic racial inequality in America, um, even if it's just we have a generational wealth gap because for until the recent times, black people could not even, were not in a position to have an accumulation of wealth that they could pass on generationally. Generationally, um, you got a situation where University of Georgia, just a few years before I was born, that's the first time they had a black student. Um, and in a state that's 30, 30 or 40 percent black, still has a much smaller black po um, student population. And yes, there are HB uh, historically black colleges, those are wonderful institutions. Um, I'm not trying to say, but they don't make up that racial gap at UGA. Um, and we look at our schools, we see graduation rates and situations there. There's things that, there's a definite discrepancy when it comes to economics and policing. Um, that's there. And you can, individual cases here and there, yes, but there may be arguments as to why that is. But when you look at a society that's been that desperate for so long, different for so long, there's a reason. Um, 
we have to understand and make sure that we know that there is racial inequality and there's a systemic racial system situations in our state government, in our national government. Um, and when you look at somebody like Mr. Benton, it's Representative Benton has been in the House of Representatives for the state of Georgia for 15 years, going on 16 now. Um, and when you have someone in our state legislature that can't understand, won't acknowledge that the Klan was a white supremacist organization, who can't understand that the institution of slavery was a white supremacist institution and the Confederacy was built around maintaining that white supremacist um, institution of slavery, that the Klan was there to help maintain it in a new form for a hundred years, um, that we finished the Civil War, and you can argue that the Civil War was not about slavery, it was about slavery. Um, when you look at the t what it took for Georgia to regain its status in the Union after the Civil War, it was the passage of three amendments to the U.S. Constitution, giving black people citizenship in the country, giving black males the right to vote. Females didn't get it for until the 20s or so, and um, the abolishment of slavery. That was the three items that the state of Georgia had to pass in order to rejoin the Union. That means the war was about slavery, guys. It's that easy. Now, a lot of these didn't actually get realized for another 100 plus years um, after that, the passage of those things, but that's what it was about. Um, and we still got, the, and that's what we're arguing about today. And that's what the issue is today is a lot of these things still haven't been realized in a lot of cases. But we, when we got a guy in state government, in our state legislature, that can't even acknowledge from the very beginning that there was ever any issues with, with racism in the state. You can't trust that he's going to understand any of these issues either. I don't know what the rationalizations are that make him want to argue the the whole lost cause narrative in the year 2020. But that's what he does. That's what he's been about for the entire time he's been in the state legislature. Um, and that's how he represents this county in the state legislature. Like that, as someone that wants to keep around this image of the Confederacy. In the year 2020, we're arguing about whether or not the Confederacy was racist. That's ridiculous. And by far is not the priority of anyone other than Mr. Benton himself. It's embarrassing for this county. It's something we need to change. So that's why I'm running because I don't think that he will understand or can't understand. He's been completely silent this entire time. I haven't heard anything out of him except for a, um, a visit to a Commerce Elementary School class virtually to show off his Civil War collection. That's the only statement I've seen out of him um, since the legislature went out of um, session. So that's our representative we have right now. And that's why I think we need a change. I hope you agree with me if you do vote for me. If not, if you see other issues, please let me know. Um, but that's my issues with our current representative. I've got things that I want to work on. I want better broadband access in this county. I want um, to work on affordable housing issues. I want to protect the state budget when it comes to paying our teachers and not looking directly at teachers and education for as a piggy bank to then like, oh, we don't have the revenues. That's the disposable part. No. Teachers are not our disposable part to just lop off and pay for if we have the money. No, no. We can look at the billions of dollars in tax breaks that we've given to large multinational corporations, some of the richest corporations in the world. I'm talking your Coca-Colas, your Deltas, your big, big, big companies that we are begging and pleading to be here and we just won't make you pay any taxes if you're here. They can pay some taxes. They can help us offset this. We can all be in this together. You know, I, I'm not for like just jacking up taxes for every company out there, but they, they can also pay us a fair share instead of letting them all scot-free to maintain these tax breaks while we're laying off pre-K teachers. 
that's not the way to do run our state government. That's not the way to educate our children. That's not the way to run the state. And that's why I'm running. Um, so, yes, that's there. I ask you to vote for me. I ask you to stand with these protesters that are by far peaceful in most cases. I have seen beautiful, beautiful outpouring of peace and love from so many of these protesters that are out there just asking for a way to move forward. They're asking for justice for themselves and for their friends and family and loved ones. Um, and so much of the violence that I'm seeing and the destruction seems to be opportunist that that are out just to, that would be out in any situation. Um, these are the same guys that will go out and loot and riot the Super Bowl party. So, but yeah, I, you have to pay attention and that's how you get, that's how we get past this is to show respect, show remorse, show understanding of that there is a problem in this country and we work together to move past it together. We show real movement on that. We show that we won't accept racist prosecutors. Prosecutors that can look at the Arbery tape and go, ah, I didn't really see anything that was worth prosecuting. No. Not only should that case be out of their hands, we should be asking for their removal right now. Um, the cops in Minnesota, everybody that watched that man die that had a badge on should be in jail right now as an accessory. I'm sorry. That's what should happen. Whoever made the mistakes in Louisville needs to be held accountable. I'm very proud that the Atlanta PD was able to look at the situation where two recent graduates were in their car trying to leave Atlanta, violently ripped out of their car, tased, sent to the hospital. And by in all accounts, basically they looked suspicious and looked like they were going to pull something is the only thing that they could explain. Um, the city of Atlanta did fire those two cops um, and we got others on administrative leave and that was quick. And that's exactly how these things should happen. If there is evidence that these, that these, the bad decisions are getting made, there has to be accountability. And that's been one thing that struck me is a lot of these cases, um, I've heard veterans say, if I would have had done that in a foreign war zone where I was acting under police duty, they would be court-martialed. I've heard that over and over again. Acting in the way that we've seen some of our police act over the last few days would not be acceptable for an American soldier in Afghanistan or Iraq. That should tell us something. Um, so let's be safe, keep the love. We can get through this and we can move past this, but it's going to take changes, concrete changes that everybody believes are going to happen and we have to see them happen. That's what's gonna get people off the streets. And that's what's gonna be able to let us move forward instead of being stuck in this cycle that we've been in for years. So. Love y'all. Philip for Georgia.